Okay, let's let's start then. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do today is that on error, de error detection and correction. Right. So we have seen that uh, when we transfer data over the network, uh, we convert them into signals first. All right, and then we see we have seen different ways of con uh, converting the data into signals and how the signals travel over the transmission media. And then last week we also saw the different types of transmission media, different types of cables, different types of uh, uh, wireless, different types of uh, wireless transmission, right? But on, in all this, there is a possibility of errors happening, right? So in this chapter, we're going to take a look at what kind of errors are happening during the transmission of signals. Right, so what we call this is basically transmission impairments, right? So what it means is that there are transmission problems, right? During the transfer of signals from source to destination. So transmission media is not perfect, right? There's always possibility that the signals you sent are not the same as the signals received on the other side, right? So something goes wrong along the way, right? So we have to make sure that we know what are the problems and then how we can overcome this, these particular problems, right? So in this chapter, we're going to take a look at the different types of transmission problems that can happen during the signals are being transferred from source to destination, right? Okay, so these are the three categories of problems on transmission media, or we call them impairments. So attenuation, distortion, and, and the third one is basically noise, right? So the first one, attenuation. We have seen a little bit of it last week. Attenuation basically means that the signal strength is reduced as the signal travels over the transmission media after a certain distance, right? The longer the signal travels over transmission media, the further it goes, the more possibility of the signal strength being reduced, right? Just like I'm speaking to you now, right? The further you are away from me, the lower will be my voice, right? If I don't use a microphone, a problem. Right, at, the, at the back, you probably cannot hear me. In, the, in front, you can hear me very well. It's because the strength of the signal gets reduced over distance. Right? That's what it means, attenuation. So basically, it's a loss of energy by the signal as it travels along. Right? So one way to look at it is something like this. If you have signals at, at the beginning, it's quite high amplitude, and then over time, it gets less and less, until at the end, it almost cannot be recognized. If it's a digital signal, the amplitude will be high, the, the voltage level will be high, and then as the distance, as the signal travels further and further, the, the voltage level of, the, of each bit will become less and less, until almost cannot be recognized. And just like a voice, the further you are, the less it will be, uh, you can listen to it, the strength of it. So why is the signal loses its strength? Basically, that you have to overcome the media resistance. This is basically electrical properties, right? Because the signals are basically electrical signals. Electrons travel over the wire. The wire has resistance, right? So the, the electron has to overcome the, resist the resistance to reach the other side. And consequence of this is that some of this resistance actually creates a little bit of heat in the cables. So for analog signals, attenuation basically means that amplitude gets smaller, like this. For digital signals, the voltage level gets lower, right? So at the end, at, at, towards, the, towards the end, it might not even able to be recognized. Maybe you can start with, say, 5 volts. By the time it reaches there, it's only 2 volts or maybe 1 volt, which is very, very low, right? So it's difficult to read. So it could result in unrecognized signals, right? So it comes like this, you cannot recognize anymore already. It's, it's just, the, the signal strength is just too low, cannot be read anymore. So we require some kind of correction, because if you don't do that, the signal reaching the destination cannot be recognized. Right? So we must do something about it. 
So the simplest way is to do is we call it amplifier, right? So at the beginning, at the, at the, at the beginning, the signal is quite all right. We send a good signal. After traveling a certain distance over a medium, the signal is, is, is attenuated, meaning that it is, it is, it, its uh, strength has been reduced considerably, right? So what we do is that we put the signal through an amplifier, which will boost up its strength or its amplitude or its, 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 its uh, voltage levels. So the signal com comes out from the amplifier is almost as good, almost as good as the original signal. Yeah, just like I say, when I'm speaking to you, I use a microphone, right? This, so this microphone goes through the, 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 the amplifying system, the loudspeakers. So loudspeakers basically will enhance the voice, right? The signal, the strength of the voice, so they can be here, can go further. All right. So we need some kind of amplifying. So now we need to do is we, we need to measure how much is attenuation, right? For example, when you say that the signal is attenuated, how much has been, how much strength has been reduced for the signal as it travels, right? So this is measured by decibels. So, so the, the decibels basically measures how much the signal has gained or lost its strength or power after traveling a certain distance. Right, so it's basically a relative comparison. So it measures two st relative strengths between two signals or one signal at two different points. Right? For example, the previous case, we measure the signal strength here and then we measure the signal strength here and then we compare whether the, si the, the strength has reduced or has it decreased. And decrease how much? So if the value is positive, means the signal has gained strength. If it's negative, means the signal has lost strength. All right. So the, the, the standard for cables is basically decibels per kilometer. All right. So any cable you take, you take a coaxial cable, you take a UTP cable, you take a fiber optic cable, the cable standard will define the attenuation level. You will say, what is the attenuation for a particular cable? So if you look at the cable, the one on the floor, there will be some kind of marking or some kind of lettering on the cable that says that this is attenuation, how many decibels per kilometer. It will lose the signal strength. Right? So to calculate decibels, this is the formula. Right? P2 or P1, P2 is the, uh, the new value, P1 is the old value of the signal and then we take a logarithm, 10 logarithm of it, multiplied by 10, that's the value of the decibel, right? So let's take example, right? So P1 here, P1, P2, is, this, this is P2, this is P1, right? So that's what we compare, the, the formula. So let's take example. So let's say a signal travels through a medium and the power is reduced by half, right? So if, the, if the, the strength of the signal at P2 is one half compared to P1, right? After traveling some distance, the signal strength has been reduced by half. So how much is the, the attenuation, right? That's what we're going to calculate. What is the value of the decibels? So it's very simple. What we do is the formula, right? Use the formula here. 10 log, logarithm of 10, P2 or P1. So P2 or P1. P2 is basically half of P1 because signal strength has reduced by half. So it's half P1. So what you do is you, this is what you get. And then what you, at the end, the value we get is negative 3 decibels. Right? So the negative here shows that the signal strength has reduced between P1 and P2, right? which is true because the signal strength of P2 is only half of the P2 one. Right? So a loss of 3 dB is equivalent to losing one half of the power, right? Another example, right? So a signal travels to amplifier and its power is now increased 10 times, right? So now what's the, what is the difference? What is the attenuation now? So now we are going, the signal strength has been reduced by, by amplifier now 10 times. 
So P2 is now 10 times of P1, right? So in this case, the signal, the, the attenuation is now positive value of 10. Right? So the signal after the amplifier, the signal strength has been reduced 10 times. Right? So the, the, the attenuation, the decibel gives you a very good measurement of whether or how much has the signal strength reduced or increased. Right? Another example, so let's say we have four points, P1, P2, P3, P4. So between P1 and P2, the signal attenuation of minus 3. Between P2 and P3, when the signal is amplified and then the attenuation is positive 7. After that, the, the signal travels another distance and then there is another attenuation of minus 3. Right? So now we want to know is that compare P1 to P4, whether the signal has gained strength or has it reduced strength. Right? So whether the, the, the signal at P4 is higher, is stronger than P1 or is it less than that? Right? So what we do is that in this case, the attenuation is quite simple. We just add up the values along the way. All right? So as signal travels from P1 to P4, the, value, the decibel value can be calculated as just minus 3 plus 7 minus 3, then you get positive 1. So P4 compared to P1 is a positive 1 attenuation decibels. It means that between P4 and P1, the signal has increased an average gain of 1, right? 1 decibel. Although it reduces here, but then it's been amplified, increase again, then reduce again. But at the end, this value is still higher compared to here. Right? Another example is a signal at the beginning of a, of a cable. So now we, we're using a, the, the standard the, 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 the standard of a cable. Cable says that it, the attenuation of the cable is minus 0.3 decibels per kilometer. So what it means is that for every kilometer of the cable, the signal strength will reduce by 0.3 of a decibel, every kilometer it travels. Right? So in this case, our, at the beginning, the signal is 2 milliwatts, and then and the signal travels for 5 kilometers on the cable. So we're going to find out what is the signal strength at the end of the 5 kilometers. Right? So very simple. So if one kilometer, one kilometer attenuation is minus 0.3, so 5 kilometers means minus 1.5 attenuation, right? So the value here, this value is now 1.5, minus 1.5. So what we, know, what we want to know is the P1 we know is 2, mill, two milliwatts, so we want to know, find out what's the value for P2 at the end of the 5 kilometers. So put in the values and then make calculation, then this is the answer you get, right? So P2 in this case is 1.4 milliwatts. So from 2 milliwatts, after traveling 5 kilometers, the signal strength has been reduced to 1.4 milliwatt, right? And how much it, it, it reduces is based on the, the attenuation, the standard attenuation given in the cable itself, right? So if the attenuation of the cable is higher, it means that the signal will lose strength <coughs> faster. Right? If the attenuation is low, it will be better. Right? All right, so that's the first type. So the first type of problem with transmission is that signal strength reduced. Right? The second type of problem in the, in the transmission media is basically distortion. Here, the signal strength, signal strength is not reduced or not affected, but the signal shape or the, the, the signal shape it basically changes. So the signal becomes a bit distorted. It looks a bit different from the earlier one. Right? The pattern looks different. This normally happens is in, in analog signals, especially composite signals, because composite signal, if you remember, consists of different frequencies. Different uh, signals of different frequencies are combined into to make one composite signal, right? So each signal will have its own 
traveling speed or propagation speed. So there will be slight delay. So each, each, component, each component will be arriving at a slightly different time, slightly delayed compared to the other signals. All right? So this makes it that there is a different phase in the, in the composite signal. All right? So let's take an example here, right? for example like this. So this is the composite signal. It's made up of three different frequencies. Three different signals are combined to make one composite signal. And in the beginning, at the beginning, in the sender time, the, the, the phase of th the three individual signals are the same. So at point zero, they're going up. Point zero, going up. At point zero, they're all going up. Right? They're the same phase. But at the receiver side, what happens is that you see that at point zero, the phase of the signal has changed for signal number two and also signal number three. They're no longer what it was originally. Right? So if you combine these three, slightly difference in phase, then this is the composite signal which will be received by the destination. So this composite signal looks different compared to the original one. So this one is different shape from here. So it, it is dis distorted. Right? Maybe the signal strength is still the same, but it's distorted now. It looks different. Right? So that's, that's called distortion. It's caused again because of the each signal, each, each frequency will be traveling at a slightly different speed on the cable itself. Right? Because they are, it's a characteristic of different frequencies. Right? So again, if the, if the distortion is very, very high, then it'll be, it might become a problem where you cannot recognize this anymore. Really. If, it, if too, much, too much of a, a distortion. Now the third type of uh, problems in the transmission media are the, is the noise. Right? So what is noise? Just like you know what noise is, right? Just like when I'm speaking, somebody is speaking, there's noise. Right? And this is so what is noise? Unwanted addition to the signal. Something which, which, is not, which is not required or something which is not useful. So unwanted signal from outside in, is actually added on to the original signal. So it changes the characteristics of the original signal. So it may cause the signal to be unrecognizable, corruption of the data, or to be recognized incorrectly. Right? So there are many, many types of noise. Right? So this is, a, this is a signal we transmit. There is some noise coming in. This thing will be added on. And then what we receive is different from what we sent. Right? Now there are many types of noises. Right? So the first one, the thermal noise. Now thermal noise is basically something inside the wire itself caused by the properties of the electrons when they travel over the wires. So thermal noise is internal. It's caused by the random motion of electrons in wire, causes extra signal not originally sent. Right? So also called the white noise, background noise, or Gaussian noise. Right? Now this kind of noise always present, relatively constant, and cannot be eliminated. Right? But can be reduced. So example, clear example would be in your radio and TVs, right? For example, TV like this, right? You switch onto a channel which is not tuned to any particular TV station yet, you will see some kind of hiss sound and, and, and white and black dots, right? That's a background noise, something like this. Or if it's not tuned properly, you will see ghost pictures and all that. Right? So this is called uh, white, white noise or background noise, right? Same thing for radios also, certain types, certain, between radio stations, you can hear some kind of static. Right? So that's Gaussian noise. So this cannot be eliminated, right? It's always there, but we, we have got to find a way to reduce it. Right? So thermal noise, right? So this example of no noise, exactly perfect conditions. If it's a little noise, then the signal will be affected a little bit. By the noise is a lot, then 
the component of the, uh, the bits will be affected more, and then now we, there's a possibility of the data gets corrupted uh, because we cannot recognize it anymore. Second type of noise, so-called induced noise. Right? Induced noise is basically that that some, some electrical current is generated inside the wires based on the magnetic interference from outside. Electromagnetic interference from motors, antennas, and all these things are basically generating some kind of, of, of small amounts of current in the wires. So this will also cause noise there. Right? Third type. The crosstalk, right? Crosstalk is basically that when two wires or two signal paths come into contact with one another, or overlap, right? So now the two signal paths are basically colliding, right? So this could be electrical component uh, coupling or microwave coupling, right? So is, what happens is that. You have two wires sending data, and then if they come too close or touch each other, then the signal from one will get onto the other, and from A will go into B, B will go into A, and then they will get a little bit of uh, data will be corrupted. Right? So, a clear example would be telephone systems, right? Not your mobile phone, but your normally your, your, your landlines, like the home telephone and all that. Sometimes you might have experienced that if it's, if it's raining or thunderstorm, you make a call, long distance call, it's not clear, and then you can hear some voices in the phone system itself. And these are, hopefully, these voices are not in, in your head. It's in the phone, right? So this is basically because somebody else is talking, the two lines are basically gets overlap. Right? So again, crosstalk is constant. But it can be reduced, right? Different techniques for that. Okay. So this example of a crosstalk, right? So two people so transmission lines, uh, voice signals are being sent by two different wires. If they come too close to each, then there's a possibility that one conversation will be heard on the other side. The fourth type is the impulse noise. Now, impulse noise is suddenly, which is sud suddenly the noise come out. Right? Earlier, what you have seen so far is like crosstalk is constant. Induced noise also is constant. Thermal noise is also constant, always there. Little bit, little bit amount. Right? Impulse noise is the one which is happens suddenly. Right? Random spikes of power. Okay? So short duration, unpredictable, non-constant. Right? So for example, your signal like this is traveling, suddenly there's, there, is a, there is a noise. Or this is your signal, suddenly there's a noise. An example would be a thunderstorm, suddenly there's a lightning. Right? A big, thund a big uh, thunderstorm, right? You hear everybody, whatever I say, cannot be heard for that particular maybe one or two seconds. Right? That's, that's a uh, impulse noise. The noise you are making while we are doing this lecture, that's background noise. Always there. Cannot be eliminated. Right? Can only be reduced. So impulse noise is basically short duration, unpredictable, and non-constant. And it's difficult to reduce, or eliminate, or remove, because we do not know when it's going to happen. All right? We do not know when it's going to happen, and how much it's going to affect. How, how big is the noise? We do not know. So there's no way for us to predict or do anything about it. Right? Just accept it. So it's impulse noise. Right? So for example, this is the there's some background background noise on the signals itself. So not too bad. We can still recognize the digital bits. But then impulse noise comes in like this, then the whole signal will be destroyed. There's no way we can read this from it. So, how does the impulse noise affect your data? It depends on the speed of transmission. If you are transmitting at slower speed, one bit, one bit, so if the noise happens like this, in this case, you only lose most likely one bit. Not a big problem. 
But if you're transmitting at high speed, then your bits are very, very close. So therefore, if the same amount of noise, same duration, then what you're losing, you're losing multiple bits of data. Right? Now, for example, if I speak slowly, then thunderstorm comes one second, not a problem. But if I speak very fast, thunder, same thunderstorm, um, you might miss a few sentences then. All right, so it depends on that. There's another type of noise, so-called echo. Right? Echo is basically is that a signal is, 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 is reflected back into the media again. Right? So for example, like this, this sender is sending data to here, to this receiver. The signal goes here. Then at the end, the signal also reflects back. It bounces back at a lower level. It is slower at a lower signal strength. Then it comes here, bounces back again. So the same signal travels multiple times, bouncing back, back and forth between the sender and receiver. Right? So we call it the reflective feedback of a transmitted signal as it moves through a medium. Right? And it mostly happens in coaxial cables. For example, like this, right? Coaxial cable, if you remember last time we saw that. And so this is a bus topology. And so the, the different machines share the same cable. So if this machine is sent, transmitting data, it will send the signal out on the cable. The, the signal will travel in both directions, right? This, the, 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 the black line. When it reaches the end of the cable, it will bounce back bounce back in a very slower, at, at a lower amplitude, at low strength. So now what happens is this particular user will receive the signal, original signal from this, the sender, plus also the reflected signal, bounce back. And this bounce back will go on until here, then bounce back again. Right? So this bouncing back will actually causes interference. Right? It's basically a noise, in other words, because it's extra to the original signal itself. Right? So that's why for bus topology, if you use a coaxial cable, we have to make sure we, we, do, we make sure we take care of this problem. We do not allow the signal to bounce back. Right? If you remember last time, what we use is that we use a terminator here. Right? We use a terminator at the end of the cables to make sure that whatever signal comes in, it will be absorbed by the terminator so that it does not the signal does not bounce back into the cable again. Right? The example is like this in, this, in this hall, right? Whatever I speak, you only hear my voice once. You don't hear the voice again bouncing back, right? It's because uh, on the walls, you have this sound absorbing material, right? This one, all this, all this the blue one, is basically soft cloth or, or some kind of, of, of uh, material which absorbs sound waves. So it does not bounce back, right? Let's say we only have, we do not have this particular cloth. It's basically pure concrete. If you go to a big hall with pure concrete walls and floor, and then if you speak there, you will see that your voice will actually bounce back a few times. And that's echo. So if that's echo, then of course, you, people in, sitting inside the hall listening will not be very pleasant because the voice will be bouncing back. Right? So we require some kind of a mechanism to do this, to overcome this. So echo could interfere with the original signal, as you mentioned earlier. Right? So it's normally constant and can be reduced. So we use echo suppressors, filter that allows signal to travel in one direction only. Or we use the terminators for coaxial cables. It absorbs all the incoming signals. Right? So we, need to, we have some kind of mechanism to overcome the echo. Right? So we can reduce it to a certain extent. Right? Not, not completely eliminate, but reduce it. The final type of, uh, of uh, problem in transmission is basically so-called jitter. Right? Jitter is something like this. It's basically like a signal like shakes. Right? Something like this. It's, 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 the signal is not clean. It, it shakes a little bit. It's just like earthquake. If you have earthquake, everything shakes. 
right? Wobbles. Everything shakes. So it's not clean signal, right? So that's jitter. So jitter is, occurs. It's due to the timing irregularities during the transmission of digital signals, especially when it gets repeated over and over, right? So the rise and fall of digital signals begin to get begin to shift or get blurry so like this. Instead of one clean one, you get multiple, the, the red and the blue lines, right? For example, like this also. If it's serious, it can actually interfere with the uh, transmission, right? Because now you cannot read. If, if it gets too much, if it gets too much, then you don't know where to read because this thing is a bit, becoming a bit blurry. Right? It's not clean, uh, clean uh, signal anymore. So if it's serious, it can force the system to slow down transmission, for example, video flickers, audio breakups, and all these things, if you listen to radio, uh, to online uh, uh, transmission. So to redu reduce jitter, we must use proper kind of cabling, shielding, right, protection on all sides, and also limit number of times the signal is repeated. Right? Because each time you repeat something, it will shake more and more. Right? It will become blurry, blur, and blur. Right, so you must reduce the amplifiers. Okay. Mm. Now, so after looking at all this, right? So we have attenuation, we have distortion, we have different types of noise. Right? All these, all these different types affect the original signal. Right? And some of the, some of these particular problems we can reduce. Most of them we cannot we cannot do anything about it. We can only reduce them. You cannot eliminate them. Right? But we try to overcome them in a certain way. Right? So the main thing is that the noise must not be too big, must not be too large as compared to the signal. If the noise is very high, then of course the signal will be affected. If the noise is low, we can still tolerate. So how do we measure this? So, them, so in, 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 uh, in transmission, there is a we can measure how much noise is tolerated or can be tolerated. Right? So we use this signal to noise ratio, right? SNR. So what SNR measures is that ratio of the signal compared to the noise. What is wanted and what is not wanted. Right? So SNR is basically used in finding what is the transmission speed which is suitable for transmission. How fast can we transmit? Right? What is the limit for transmission? Depends on the ratio itself. Right? So if the ratio is high, that means less signals are corrupted, the noise is very low compared to the signal, therefore we can transmit data at a high rate. Right? If the noise is low, uh, if the SNR is low, means that now the, si the noise is quite high compared to the signal. Right? So there's a bo more possibility of data getting corrupted. Signals getting corrupted. So therefore, we must, we must not transmit fast. We must transmit slowly at slower data rate. Right? And normally is that what we do is that SNR ratio will be, it's not a fixed ratio, it's normally adjusted accordingly. Right? You measure it and then you see what's the uh, value at that time and then adjust the bit rate accordingly. Right? So how do you how so the, how do we measure SNR? Is this is basically the formula, average signal signal power, right over the average noise power. So this is the ratio, and if you want to measure SNR in terms of decibels, then we use the same logarithm formula as we used in the signal strength uh, calculation earlier. So as we said earlier, right? So high signal, high SNR. So if you have the signal, which is uh, the signal strength is high compared to noise is noise is very little compared to very low compared to the signal. So therefore, the signal or the the the, the final signal is affected a little bit, not too much, but we can still make out the. We can still get, we can still recognize the signal. It's not too bad, right? But if the signal and the noise is quite similar, 
or the ratio is very, very small, then when it combines, then we cannot, we cannot obtain the original signal from this particular uh, combined, combined uh, signal here. Right? So, this is the problem there. Right? So, small SNR is not, is not uh, recommended. So, we, we want large SNR. Right? Okay? So, how do we ensure that? How do we make sure that the, it's always high SNR? Right? Just like I said, when we're speaking here. So, when I speak, I will also try to hear what is the noise level. If the noise level is low, I can speak softly. Right? But if the noise gets higher, I probably have to shout. I have to go back at the, at the back and adjust the volume of the microphone. I have to make sure that my signals are higher compared to the noise. Right? So, this thing must be done. So, when, you, when, when, the, when the source tries to send data, send, send the signals, you will try to see what's the noise level and then adjust the signal strength accordingly. Right? So, that make sure the signal is always higher than the noise. So, this example, uh, the power signal is 10, 10 milliwatts. The, no, the noise is about 1 microwatt. Right? So, what's the calculated value of SNR? Again, very simple, use the formula just now here. Right? So, SNR is signal, signal strength, signal power over noise power. Right? So, this is milliwatts, this is microwatts, we change into the same unit. So, now SNR is 10,000, right? which is good. So, the difference between noise and the signal is 10,000, which is good. Right? If you want to measure in terms of decibels, SNR, then we use the same formula again with a logarithm 10 log, right? then we get value of 40. Right? Now, so after looking at all these things, we, there's so much we see, there's so much noise, right? When we transmit data and all that. So, but there, there is a so what we try to do is that we try to find a, a channel, rather a, a, a way to transmit. If there if there's a possibility of a noiseless channel, meaning that there's no noise altogether, right? So this is the ideal condition for transmission. Right? Just like we are speaking here in a hall, can I get a complete silence? No way. Right? Everybody knows that. You know that, I know that. I only have to, what I will have to do is to make, I make sure I increase my signal, that's all. There's no way you can get a complete silence. Let's say all of you are so disciplined. Right? Everybody very quiet, nobody say, says a word. Is it complete silence? Yes or no? No. Where the noise comes from? Outside, yeah? The aircon noise, the, the traffic outside, there's still noise. Right? So, we cannot, cannot eliminate that. So, so, noiseless transmission is impossible. But that's what we try to achieve. We try to achieve the SNR ratio as high as possible. Right? But in some cases, you can have a complete silence, right? For example, like recording studios. When you record uh, 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 songs, albums, and all these things, the, 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 the singers will go into a special room, right? With a light beeping and says on air or whatever, all right? Or, or, or saying, uh, recording a big red signboard, say record. So no sound can go inside there. So it's a, it's a soundproof room normally, right? Recording studios use that, TV stations and also for uh, rec recording of albums. Right? So, it cannot be achieved in real life. Right? So, if you go back to our formula SNR equals signal power over noise power, we want, to, we want the noise to be removed altogether. It means that noise becomes zero. Right? So, then whatever signal power we use, we will get SNR as infinity. Right? So this is almost impossible because it is very difficult or, or, or cannot get noise to get zero, right? Okay, I think we will stop here then.
right? We'll, 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 so next time we will do on the how to detect the errors. All right, see you all then.